In uh, preparation for today's message, we shall be reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 35. Again, Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 35. Please open your Bibles to that portion of Scripture and join me in reading God's Word. Let us all rise in reverence to the Word of God. Verse 1, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her birth, for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over the flock by night. And the angels of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round, about, round them, and they were all, or they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in a swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased and when the angels when, when the angels went away from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us and they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the sayings that had been told of them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things under them in her heart. And so the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their pur purification, According to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb, they shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves, two young pigeons, now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. 
And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit in the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arm and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all the people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people, Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword shall pierce through your own soul also. So the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Praise God for the reading of His word. You may now be seated. And may I call Pastor um, for the message. Maligayang Pasko po sa inyong lahat. Yung pong salitang Pasko ay galing po sa Spanish word. Meron pong dalawang Paskwa na sinis-celebrate. Which are number one, yung pong Paskwa de Resurrection, which is the Easter Sunday or the Easter or the, the day that they celebrate the Easter. And Paskwa de Natividad or the day of the birth of the Savior. Uh, inabandon na po yun ng, ng mga ng Spanish at uh, ginagamit na po nila to greet uh, one another during Christmas is Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. So, today, I greet you Marigayang Pasko, Feliz Navidad, Merry Christmas. And if you are here and you're joining us live or uh, later scheduled, uh, nandito po kayo and uh, perhaps the story of the birth of Jesus Christ, one, medyo malabo, hindi natin alam kung ano yung talagang nangyari. Or you are here today and uh, you may know the general idea, the concept of the birth of Jesus Christ. Or three, yung idea natin and story ng birth of Jesus Christ has been diluted by other stories of the elves, the reindeers, and of Santa. And I pray that as we go through uh, our uh, our passage today, which is, by the way, there are only two books in the New Testament that foretold the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. One is in Matthew, the other is in our passage today in Luke chapter 2. Uh, though medyo mahaba po yung story and detailed, I pray that as we are reminded of the birth and the story of the birth of Jesus Christ, we will have an accurate view, an accurate knowledge of how it happened. It has always been preached in this pulpit the importance of accuracy. Being accurate is important, especially in transportation. Malihis lang po ng isang degree yung trajection ng flight, for example, ng, ng, ng plane or ng, ng vessel. It could be disastrous. It's also important. Accuracy is important in math, in accounting, in finance. It's also important in the field of medicine and surgery. Especially kung dalawa yung uh, mga organs. You have the kidney, for example, we have the left and the right. So kung maling kidney yung tinanggal natin, 
then it could also be detrimental. And of course, it's equally important to be accurate with regard to our theology, to our study of God and His Word. Kung mali po ang ating theology, mali po ang ating Christian living. And mind you, if we're talking of the gospel, the gospel of salvation, it must be so accurate dahil mali po ang ating pagkakaintindi ng gospel or mali po ang ating pag-proclaim ng gospel, well, we might end up not being in heaven or those who are we are proclaiming the gospel to may also not end up being in heaven. So accuracy is very important and I pray that as we go through that this passage, these verses, we will have a clear idea and knowledge and be reminded of the story of the birth of our Savior. Shall we start with a prayer? Let's pause and commit this time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity, allowing us to be here. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up and uh, allowing us to be here in this place together as a family. Open our hearts and our minds. Allow us to be reminded of your birth. And may we understand the importance of your birth and the details of your birth. And that as we go through the passages, the verses, we will learn important truths and principles life lessons that we may be able to apply in our lives. And I pray, Lord, that you alone be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's go through the story as presented and written by Luke, who is a historian and also a physician. I love his uh, version and his uh, writings because well, it's very detailed. So let's go through, let's start with verse 1. Now, in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. So there was a decree. Meron pong utos si Caesar Augustus, who was at that time the emperor of Rome. His real name is Gaius Octavius, or the Octavian Caesar. And he was given this name, Caesar Augustus. Augustus, which means the mighty one or the majestic one or the, the honorable one. And there are even inscriptions that they found out that he was described as the savior, the savior of the world. And so that is the reigning king, the reigning ruler, and the reigning leader of uh, that time during the birth of Jesus Christ. Now out of this, let us be reminded that Though we have also earthly kings, we have earthly leaders, we have an earthly uh, president or mayor or a boss, they can be unruly at times or they can, they can be different in regard to their leadership. Let us be reminded that it is God who is in control and sovereign beyond such earthly kings. So kung magkamali man yung ating mga leaders, yung ating mga boss, yung ating mga managers, let us be reminded that we have a king, the king of all kings, the lord of all lords, who is sovereign and in control of everything. And as we go through, I hope and I pray that we will see the hand of God, the power of God moving even though there are some earthly uh, decrees such as this, a decree that all the world, not the whole world, but the, the mga sinasakupan, yung mga influence ng Rome, should be registered. So this, there was a decree. Next, verse 2. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Now, when Quirinius was governor of Syria, it was in around, around 6 to 9 AD. And uh, so some skeptics would say that uh, the Bible is inaccurate or the writings, the, the historical writing of Luke was inaccurate because Quirinius was not governor. 
during the, the this ethic, this decree was given by Caesar Augustus. Well, the explanation is found basically in that passage. It says there, this was the first registration. The word first in Greek means protos, which also pertains to the word before. So Quirinius was the governor before the registration, and Quirinius was uh, was was elected twice. He was governor twice in Syria. The first one before the decree, and the, uh, the other one was in 6 to 9 AD, which was the one that was uh, uh, historically known. And uh, it's like if you know a mayor, an ex-mayor, like for example, when he came here in Naga City, uh, our mayor before, who is not the mayor today, we st I still call him mayor. So it, is, it could be that Quirinius was still called governor of Syria despite at this time. Anyway, it was the, during the reign of Caesar Augustus when the, this registration was instituted. Verse 3. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. So you have here a Roman decree, and you have here the Jewish decree that they would go to their their own hometown, meaning the hometown of their parents. Next slide, I mean, next verse. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, which means the house of bread. Beth meaning house, and Lehem means bread, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Now take note, Joseph went up from Galilee. Now most of my notes here, most of the things that I would share to you came from our personal experience when we were blessed. My father, me, and my son, the three generations who were blessed to be able to go to the Holy Land and visit these places. Now in the map of Israel, Galilee or Nazareth uh, is in the middle. Now Bethlehem is going south. So if you're saying Joseph also went up, well, you should be saying that you're going up north. But uh, now the, 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 the geography of Israel is that Bethlehem is a mountainous city. It's a mountainous region. It's a mountainous area. So when you're going to Bethlehem, you're, it's as if you're going up the mountains. And so Joseph went up though they're going south because of the, the slopes, uh, the higher slopes of Bethlehem, they were actually going up. And because he was of the house and lineage of David. So imagine, uh, here we have Joseph and Mary. Mary at this time was pregnant. And it would take around in our, in our computation 150 kilometers. So more or less from here to Lagpas ng Dayat or Lagpas ng Ligaspi, 150 kilometers of travel before uh, you reach uh, from Galilee going to Bethlehem. And so it was a slow walk, it's a slow travel because there was no mode of transport during that time. Uh, so there was just perhaps using a donkey or a camel as they travel. Verse 5. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. So the registration was a decree of the Roman Empire for two reasons. One is for military uh, and enlistment, so they will know who are their possible uh, fighters that they can train and perhaps they can serve, you know, can serve and uh, fight uh, as part of their army. So they, they, they will have a census of, of them. And another is for taxation purposes. So, of course, the tax is a revenue. It's the lifeblood of every state. And so they needed money during this time in order for them to create and, and uh, make roads. And so that, that was the decree given to every, uh, everyone under the uh, ng Roman Empire. Verse 6. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. So it took perhaps um, around a month or more of travel for Joseph and Mary to be able to reach Bethlehem. Verse 7. 
And she gave birth to her firstborn son. So it implies that Mary and Joseph had other children. So it was just said that the, this son was the firstborn. And wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Swaddling meaning tight you know, clothing. And laid him in a manger. Now maybe you have some belens or manger at home. And it depicts a like something like this. No, merong merong uh, made of wood na, na parang crib, and then may mga hay don. Okay, and uh, maybe that's the idea of a manger. But when we traveled, we were shown when we traveled in Bethlehem, we were shown what a manger looks like. A manger is a feeding trough, 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 trough. T R O U G H. You don't know pronouncement, but it's a it's a feeding area for animals. So nilalagyan po yun ng tubig, nilalagyan yun ng pagkain, and that is where the animals, the camels, when they travel, may mga mangers sa mga inn na tinatawa, and these are mga made up of concrete. Okay, so, tapos meron pong space sa gitna at may tubig doon at may mga pagkain doon para sa mga hayo. That is the manger. It was not a crib. Saan po tayo pinanganap? Maybe sa bahay, sa hospital, and uh, perhaps in the comfort of uh, a, a, a bed, no? a crib, and merong pediatrician, may papaanak, merong OB, may nandyan din. No? And uh, let's look at how Jesus was born during this time. He was laid in a manger, yung tinanggalan po ng tubig at ng pagkain, at dun po siya inilagay. Because there was no place for them in the inn. Na baka meron din tayong idea ng mga inn, dahil merong mga holiday inn at marami pong mga hotels uh, around the Naga City or wherever we are and we're familiar. Uh, with such places. Pero ang inpo, na as we have been also uh, told, uh, ang tawag sa kanila ay caravanry. Okay, caravan. Kasi yung mga nagta-travel, they needed uh, mga areas for their their mga animals to rest and also sila din as they travel. So ang inpo is like a, a circular area. Tapos sa mga gilid niyan, uh, nandun yung mga rooms or mga inn. And yung mga inn na yun, hindi po yun yung mga, mga rooms na meron tayo yan sa mga hotel. It was a very simple room. May bed doon, may siguro may table, and, and something may ilaw. Okay. And then sa gitna po nun, nung, mga, nung area na yun, pagpilog po yun, nasa mga gilid yung mga inns, is the caravanry. Nandun po yung manger. Nandun po pinapark yung mga camel. Doon po pinapark yung mga uh, donkey nila. Okay, ngayon mga, ano, mga tama raw ang pinapark natin. Anyway, so yun po. Doon, at doon nagsistay yung mga hayop nila. Doon din din nagpapahinga. Doon din kumakain. So yung area po na yun, medyo amoy hayop. No? Amoy mga camel. At yung, doon din sila tumutumi. Doon din sila umiihi. Doon din sila nagsistay. So just imagine the place. Dahil po walang place, walang pong bakante. There's no vacant room in the inns. Yung mga gilid-gilid na rooms, they stay there. Sa caravanry. Doon po sa kalagid na. And uh, I was reminded of our children who were born in a, in a nice hospital in the comfort of uh, the, the, a room, an air-conditioned room. So here we can see Jesus Christ being born. Remember, God owns everything, right? He, he owns everything. So just imagine an owner of the whole, let's say, hotel uh, chain in, in a city uh, one day decides to visit uh, the, the city and uh, decides to stay in one of his hotels. And uh, sabi ng manager ng hotel, sorry, there's no room for you. But I own this hotel. Uh, sorry, po, there's no available vacant room. So uh, maybe you can just stay here sa sala. Uh, sa lounge. <laughs> uh, may mga lounge yung mga hotel. Diba? And 
uh, may may music naman tayo dyan, isa may nagpapiano dyan uh, kaya ang daanan ng mga tao po yan, may medyo uh, wala pong privacy dyan so just imagine uh, God owning everything and yet His Son would be born and we'd be laid in a manger in the caravan week together with the animals and it, it shows us the humility of our Christ, of our Savior. And even on his death, he died a humble and a shameful death. Dying on the cross is the most shameful death that anyone could ever have. Because uh, dying on the cross means that you are the worst criminal during that time. He was born in a manger and he died on the cross. That's our Savior. That's how He started His life. And that is how He ended His life. Next. And she gave birth. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. So, may katang ganito na. Anong silent night, holy night, no? still of the night. Next, verse 9. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great here. I hope hindi po tayo makakita ng totoong angel because that will also be our natural reaction. Kaya po ang natural response ng mga angels sa mga persons that they, they show themselves of is do not be afraid. Verse 10. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Now, take note, observe. That when God announced that the Savior, the Messiah, has been born, He didn't give it to the local newspaper. Okay? Hindi niya binigay sa mga rich people, hindi niya binigay sa mga leaders, hindi niya binigay sa church leaders, sa mga Pharisees, and all of them. He announced the birth of Christ first through the lowly shepherds. Ang mga shepherd po, during that time, they are considered as the lowest rank sa hierarchy ng mga tao. They're, the, they're, they're considered uh, dirty and they're considered uh, unclean. Okay, why? Because they're working. They're, nagpapastol po sila 24-7. So one, they, are, they cannot honor the Sabbath day. So they're considered unclean. Okay? And, and they are taking care of this sheep, this lamb, 24 7, 24 hours. Yan po ang ginagawa nila every day. Just imagine, every day, 365 days in a year. Bakit po? Kasi ang Bethlehem is isang source po yan. Karamihan ang source ng, ng mga sheep, ng mga lamb na inasinasacrifice sa temple almost every week or if not every day. So they need to take care, especially mga unblemished na mga lamb. Alagaan po nila yun. Okay? Hanggang sa dumating yung time na pukunin na sila, isa-sacrifice na sila sa temple. So just imagine kung paano nila gawin po ito. Kung medyo nabubore po kayo sa trabaho ninyo or napapagod kayo sa work ninyo, mabuti oh, may, may break tayo this Christmas. Try being a shepherd. Okay? Yan. And so it's interesting that God would announce to an angel the birth of the Savior through them. Let's continue, verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Of course, he would be later known to be as Jesus, which means the Savior of the world. Next, verse 12. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Next. And suddenly, there was with the angel, ng una po, isa lang siya, ngayon, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. And take note, saying. Now, of course, the idea po natin dito, dahil tayo mga siguro mga Pinoy, or tayo mga mga tao, gusto natin medyo may konting drama, ano? May, parang may musical ang dating. Yeah? So, pag nung dumating yung angel of multitude, it's as if they are singing. But, 
hinahanap ko po at tinignan ko yung iba't ibang translations ng iba't ibang uh, book, ng iba't ibang Bible, lahat po consistent. Walang sinabi singing. It's proclaiming, it's saying. Of course, we may sing songs no? and, and interpret this as the angels singing. Diba? May mga kanta tayong ganyan. But, well, basically the angels were just proclaiming. They were just saying. Anyway, moving on, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. Take note, among those with whom He is pleased. So there's already a, a foreshadowing of the pre-elect, the elected, the chosen ones, those whom God Himself is pleased. Verse 15. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So just imagine the irony of it. They're taking care of this sheep every day, every hour, uh, throughout their lives. Basically, what, what is in essence of this passage is the idea that they would stop eventually taking care or looking after this unblemished and spotless sheep or lamb. Because one day, when the time comes, Jesus would be that lamb. The lamb that will be sacrificed. And so there's no more need for them to look after their sheep and their lamb because we have now the lamb of God whose death and resurrection would be sufficient as a sacrifice for everyone. There's no need to kill every day or every week a, a, an unblemished or a spotless sheep. And so in a way, God is saying, you'll be out of business soon. There'll be no need for the sheep because we have a, a lamb of God who will take away the sins of men. Verse 16, And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger, perhaps around two, three days old. Verse 17, And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. So they shared their testimony, their story of how God, through the angels, proclaimed to them that the Savior has been born. Next, verse 18, And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. Verse 19, but Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. They were told, they saw, they left praising and glorifying God. Why? Because it was real to them. They saw with their own eyes. The Messiah, the Savior, has indeed been born. And this is the fulfillment of the promise of God to them, to the Jews first, that the Savior will be born in Bethlehem. And they saw Jesus as a baby with their own eyes. Verse 21. And at the end of eight days, there now be two important uh, under the law, there are two important uh, acts that the, the parents must do with their child. One is circumcision and uh, we already know that it was done on the eighth day as decreed uh, to Abraham because at that time the, the platelet count is at peak, right? it's at its peak. And uh, it will protect the bleeding and prevent bleeding. That's the first circumcision. And he was called Jesus pertaining to Luke chapter 1, which an angel, Gabriel, told Mary to name him. The name given by the angel before he was conceived 
in the womb, Jesus meaning Savior. Okay. Then 22, and when the time came for their purification, this is the second act that they need to do. According to the law of Moses, uh, siguro sa time natin today, uh, this is the child dedication. A child dedication. They brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So this is a law, a decree, uh, the Jewish law wherein they need to uh, pay and redeem no, yung, yung priest uh, for their firstborn child with either a lamb kung medyo mayaman yaman or pag medyo walang pera could be birds. Verse 23 As it is written in the law of the Lord every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. So the child will be given to the Lord. Verse 24 as a form of dedication like what we do today in our time and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. During this time, wala pa po yung magi. Di pa po nag-visit yung magi, bringing mga gifts, no? mga frankincense, gold, mirror, etc. and uh, other stuff. And so, makita natin yung poverty in Mary and Joseph, the simplicity. They cannot even afford a sheep or a lamb to be offered in exchange to redeem uh, Jesus. So what they gave is a pair of parang kanta to, no? two turtle doves and a uh, yeah. no, anyway. So it's a turtle dove, maybe baka mabagal ulipad to. Ito, mga dove na to. Kasi may mga racer na mga dove, di ba? So, uh, uh, ano, chill lang sila pag lumilipad. Or two young pigeons as part of their offering. Verse 25. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Uh, and all, we almost called our firstborn son Simeon. Ayan, parang medyo, parang ano na. So, Simon na lang, parang from Jesus. Uh, but, let's look at this, this interesting man whose name is Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout. And, and I pray that we'll become like this one day and we'll be will be described as like this person, righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Now, the word consolation, of course, sa mga panahon niya, may mga raffle, no? sa mga Christmas party, merong major prize, merong minor prize, or consolation prize. No? But the word consolation does not mean minor. It means the major. Baliktan, no? So when you say consolation, this is the prize. This is the the gift, no? waiting for the consolation of Israel, which God promised. And uh, the Holy Spirit was upon him. Three times, uh, Luke will say that the Holy Spirit is upon this person. The first is this one. Next, verse 26. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So I like to imagine that Simeon is an old man. A holy man, righteous and devout, and he was given this prophecy by a, the Holy Spirit, and he would not die, in other words, until he sees the Savior. He will not die. So, okay, maybe in his old age, every, every day he would go to the temple and look for this Savior, this promised child to be born every day. He would look at the couples bringing their child for offering their firstborn child and he would look, is this the one? Is this the one? No, it's not. It's not. Until one day, verse 27, he came in the, uh, he came in the spirit, this is the third time, into the temple and when the parents, meaning Mary and Joseph, brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, the Napuyon dedication, yung offering redemption, verse 28, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, so it was the Holy Spirit that revealed to him that this child is finally the Messiah, the Savior. So siguro, with permission, may I take your baby and hold him? Because, next slide, Lord, he would say, and bless God, and he would say, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. 
meaning to say, I'm now going to die at last. I will now be at peace. Tanda, tanda ko na, Lord. Labo na ng mata ko, siguro, mga buto-buto ko, sakit na every day because of rheumatoid arthritis and all. And I cannot die until I see the Savior. And finally, Lord, you are letting me depart according to your word. Verse 30, For my eyes have seen your salvation. My eyes, personally, have seen your salvation. In my notes here, in, 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 the Bible, in my Bible, I wrote here, salvation is not something that we work on. Salvation is something that we earn or work for. It is someone that we know. It is by knowing someone, by seeing the Savior Himself that will bring us salvation. Because that will bring us to repentance and faith on the promise of God that one day He will give the Savior. So He saw salvation in Jesus Christ. And I pray, brothers and sisters, that we will see also salvation, not in the form of good works, but out of faith and out of a change of perspective in life, we will see salvation in Jesus Christ alone. Because it is true Christ saying, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in that context, it is only through Christ alone that we will have eternal life. So brothers and sisters, may we be reminded of the truth that we cannot work our way to salvation. It is through Christ alone that we are saved. Verse 31, which you have prepared in the presence of peoples. 32, a light of revelation to the Gentiles. Take note, the Gentiles. We are included in this group. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And then verse 33, and his father and mother were amazed. They, were, they marveled at what was said about him. 34, And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary's mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a, next, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also. Simeon is prophesying, Simeon is saying, proclaiming that Jesus would be the rise and fall of many in Israel. Those who believe in him, they will rise. And those who would reject him, they would fall. And for Mary, as far as Mary is concerned, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. And this was perhaps what Mary felt when he saw Jesus Christ on the cross, dying, suffering, bleeding to death, and eventually dying and being buried. This is what Mary felt, a sword piercing through his own soul also. And I'd like to end with this passage, brothers and sisters, as we close, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Thoughts from many hearts will be revealed. What does this mean? A person's response to Jesus Christ would reveal not only his thoughts, but his heart. How we respond to the gospel of Christ would reveal our hearts. 
And as an application may I add to this, just allow me to just expand this a little more. It will also reveal our eternal destiny. How we respond to Christ will also reveal our eternal destiny. God gave His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, so that anyone who believes in Him will not perish but will have everlasting life. God is given to all, but the benefit of eternity will only be experienced by those who would repent of their sins and who would believe in Christ as the Lord and Savior. Today, brothers and sisters, and those who are listening and watching this, it is my prayer that our response to the birth, to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, would be that of faith alone. That we declare that we cannot be saved out of our own good works or we cannot be saved by anyone else other than Jesus Christ. For it is through Christ alone that we are saved through faith. And so as we respond to the invitation of Jesus inviting each and every one of us today, come and follow me, would reveal our hearts and would reveal our eternal destiny. If God is inviting you today, God gave His Son one night, though we celebrate His birth on this day, uh, many Bible scholars believe it was around May that, that Jesus was born. Well, the time and the day would not be important compared to the importance of the fulfillment of salvation from God's wrath to the birth of Christ. So that when Jesus Christ came, we have a, the way, we have a the, the way to be to be forgiven of our sins to be given eternal life and so God invites us and asks us one of the ultimate questions that I have also asked in my life before is there a place is there a room for Jesus in my heart or am I like this busy inns that are full of travelers going to register, going to also sign up for their census, that there is no place for Christ. How about in our hearts? Do we have a place for Jesus in our hearts? In the busyness of our schedule, in our, the busyness of our life, the business, our family, and the things that we do. Do we have time place for Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, Jesus did not come to be an earthly king. He came as a king of our hearts. Our hearts would be his territory. And how we respond to him would reveal our hearts. What is inside our hearts? and our destiny. Shall we all stand? And as we reflect on the essence of the birth of Christ, the fulfillment of the promise of God, that we shall be saved from His judgment, from His wrath, for God is a holy God and God is a righteous God. The problem is we are all sinners. And with that one sin that we have done, that would be enough, sufficient for God to punish us because He's a righteous and holy God. And so all of us, our destiny is supposed to be hell. 
an eternity of separation from God and in His presence. A place where there is torment, there is eternal suffering, there is an ending pain and death in the absence of God. Yet God is also merciful and gracious and loving that He gave Jesus Christ. Or Jesus, thank you for your unconditional and sacrificial love. That through your death and resurrection on the cross, our sins are forgiven. We are made righteous. And we are now called sons and daughters. So please forgive us of our sins. Forgive us, Father, for the things we have done against you and against one another. And thank you because your promise is indeed true and that you are true to your promise that you, Christ, our sins will be forgiven. And today, Lord, by faith, we repent and we proclaim our full commitment and trust on you alone. As we reflect on the day you were born, though unknown, As Luke has written in those days. In those days, indeed, historically, you were born. And as we have been reminded of the humility of your birth, may we see a Savior. who is humble, a servant who did not come on earth to be served. A God who gave up His sovereignty in heavens to become flesh, to become a man like us who does not deserve suffering and even death. Yet out of your great love, you have died and you have resurrected to defeat the consequence of death for eternity. So Father, we declare that we believe in you that what you have done on the cross is sufficient for us to be saved. May we know you in a personal way. May we see you in a personal way. Our spiritual eyes, I pray, would you open them, Father, that we may see you and taste you and live out for you. Thank you, Lord, because you have fulfilled your promise and that we have a reason to celebrate today because of Jesus Christ. So as we continue, Lord, our celebration individually as a family, as a church community, May your name alone be lifted up and glorified. The name above all names. Yet we pray, Lord, that you enable us, empower us, give us, Lord, the capacity. 
and urge us and inspire us and encourage us to meet you regularly, constantly, on a day-to-day -day basis. Not only giving you a part of our heart, part of our life, but would you be, Lord, the, the King of our whole life? That we will not be like the inns having no place for you. Lord, today we glorify you, we honor you, and we joyfully celebrate for who you are and what you have done. And it is my personal prayer that we will indeed, like Simeon, before we depart in peace, that we can also say we have seen the Messiah, the Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, Lord, we just want to honor you and praise you and glorify you. service. It will also be at 10 a.m. So, Merry Christmas and see you next Sunday.